Welcome back to Into the Wolf Time. Now today in Into the Wolf Time, it is finally, finally done. The cape sculpting tutorial that you all wanted. Now, um, I'll warn you now, this episode is going to be a long one. So long, in fact, I've had to split it up into two parts. But hey, you guys wanted it, I did it, you guys are going to watch it. So uh, yeah, um, that's really all that there is this week, just the cape sculpting tutorial. There's also a bit of a tutorial on sculpting fair as well, I'll have you guys know. Uh, but first what I'd like to do, I'd just like to take a minute just to say thank you for all the video responses for my competition that I'm running uh, to the end of next month. Um, I'll put, I'll, I'll, in regards to that, in case you guys are new subscribers and you want to enter and you only just pick this episode up, or if you're just passing through, whatever, uh, I'll put up the uh, entry date now. Now, uh, the competition, uh, I'll go over it briefly, it's in my previous episode, there'll be a linky linky in the doobly doo to there, for you lazy people that don't want to go and to my channel and go all the way back and such what and, and, and things. Uh, so yeah, um, essentially uh, it is a bits box bash competition, uh, build your guy, build your model, uh, make him dynamic, doesn't have to be painted, if it's painted it will help, um, and yeah, make him really dynamic. Uh, the real is that you can't buy any pieces, you have to use the only bits in your bits box. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, now, uh, some of the actual entries, the standard is brilliant at the moment. I've had about six video responses. By the way, make your video responses to the last episode, uh, not this one. So that is a no-no for this episode, but a yes for the last episode. Uh, yeah, quality of the entry is absolutely outstanding. There's some fantastic work and some awesome paint jobs out there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say on the subject. Keep them coming. Uh, like I say, you've got pretty much a whole month now to uh, do those responses. And, um, yeah, just thank you very much. But first, before we kick off with the great cape sculpting tutorial, it's time for the 40k motivational poster of the week. Dread not, because dying is no excuse to stop fighting. Okay guys, welcome to the elusive and much requested how to make a cape tutorial. Now, the first thing you want to do when you're doing a cape is think of what kind of cape you're doing. Now, um, there's many different kinds of capes. The main two I do are just your bog standard kind of like flowy ones like this and I also do like wolf pelts and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a wolf pelt cape. Uh, wolf pelt capes I find are personally the easiest because you don't have to make the green stuff that smooth and you can leave fingerprints in it and stuff like that whatever you want because we'll just sculpt fur over it in the end. So what you need to do Oh, sorry, second thing you need to do is think about what style of cape, whether it is going to have, um, you know, whether it's just going to be, like, tucked in or nailed down here or something like that on Terminators, uh, or whether it's going to have some kind of clasps, or there's just going to be, like, a throw-over or something. Um, the cape I'm going to be doing for the diorama piece is, like, a throw-over kind of cape. Uh, obviously, you, you, you can kind of say that there's something concealed inside it, like, that makes it stick on, but it's going to be cool. Essentially, what it's going to be... It's going to be a wolf pelt with um, some like wolf paw thingies like hanging down, you know, around his uh, his neck like that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first of all do the main bit of the cape. So you get your green stuff, and what you're going to do is you're just going to squish it out. Again, this is the easiest kind because you don't have to be very you know accurate with it. So you just literally squish it out into a flat shape and try and make it cape shaped you know I don't really know if there's a specific pattern for a cape but try and make it slightly slightly longer at one end you know slightly wider uh, at one end and then slightly narrower um, at the uh, at the top 
Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do that, and then we're just going to lay it over and see if it uh, see if it fits. So here we go. We got like a decent sized cape shape now. So what we're going to do, because we want it to be like a throw over, it's going to be coming around his neck. We want to get the front bits like this, and we just want to tease them out like that. So just keep keep pulling, <laughs> keep tugging away at your green stuff, and uh, so we get something that resembles like that. You might want to make them a bit longer so they actually go around his neck. Now, what we do is we lay it over like this, so it's actually over his uh, over his back, and we turn it around at the front. And what we're going to do, we're going to attempt. What do you know what I might have to do for this? You know. We might have to pop his head off. I don't think it was stuck down very well anyway. Oh, I stand corrected. It was stuck down quite well. That's a bit of a shit. Oh, balls. <laughs> okay, well, now we can't pop his head off. We're going to have to just try and work around that. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to put these. Where's me? Where's me pokey? There we go. Got a pokey. I'm just going to tease it round here. Now this, again, at this stage you don't need to be very um, accurate in terms of what you're doing. You can make marks in it and you can poke it down wherever. Because what we're going to do, we're going to make these little bits here around his neck like um, claws and the wolf, or the paws of the wolf kind of thing. There we go. And these are going to have obviously fur sculpted over them as the final result. Now, now that you've got your actual cape down, what you want to do, you want to start just like making the edges, you know, just a little bit, you know, again, you don't have to be too neat with this because like I say, his fur is going to be sculpted over. So you want to make it sure that you can still see part of the, the Terminator armour, you know, poking through. So I mean, you can do this if you want. I mean, this is making like a little bit of a, a little bit of a collared effect. So you just use your pokey to just smooth stuff and just pull it, just like turn it over like that. Okay, so there we go. We have a basic um, underlaying of a cape going on here. Now, in order to make the folds, what you want to do is you just want to literally just go with what you feel. Now, this is going to be like, because his arm is out here, I, I imagine this bit to be kind of you know, flowing out like that. So you want it to be, you know, like have some nice folds in it and whatnot. Okay, so we're going to be doing it kind of like that. And again, doesn't really matter, you know, if it looks a bit crappy. And the edges as well, don't worry about these edges, because what we're going to do later, we're going to be trimming some of the edges off it with uh, just a pair of clippers, um, just to make it look a bit more raggedy, because he is going to be, I've decided now that this guy's going to be a wolf lord. So we're going to pull it and stretch it out, so it just looks a bit more dynamic, because he's kind of got his arm back there, which is going to be pushing the cape out a little bit. Let's maybe give it a bit of a fold like that. Yeah, so we've got a bit of a fold going on. Because like I say it's a piece of material and capes do tend to fold. And then you end up with like with bits like this, which are a really nice kind of fold that's going on. That just occurs naturally as you're folding the uh, the green stuff and as you're manipulating it a little bit. Okay, so as you see there we have a uh, basic um cape shape. Um, I'm going to uh, let this dry, uh, but first I'm going to give you a few more tips. If you want to get maybe some more dynamic kind of capes, and what I have done in the past, uh, that's okay because there's not too much movement in there. If you are going to make it so that it's like flowing backwards like it's in the wind, the easiest way of doing that is you have to do it in stages, unfortunately, with capes. There's no way you can do it all in one sitting uh, because, like I said, the green stuff is still relative well it's still very very malleable so what I do if I want it to get it flowing out what I will do I will pull it out like this but obviously as you can see if you just pull it out like that it's gonna fall back down let's do that again it's gonna fall back now that's so what you want to do if you want it to be flowing outwards you put it like that and then you get a vice or any other kind of you know implement that will allow you to you know hold something in a G clamp would do it you could do it with a G clamp if you wanted and you Take hold of the model, 
This is a bit awkward because this base is a bit silly because of the rock. Let's try and open the vice as wide as it'll go. Which isn't very wide. I've got to say, I'm not a fan of the GW vice. I find it very flimsy. Uh, not really, I actually do have a proper hobby vice which is made out of metal and you can actually G clamp that to the desk. Because like, the Games Workshop one, it's got this little sucker thing here. Which you kind of have to lick and stick, but it pops off because it's just really poorly made. So if you want something, you know, like that, you leave it that way, and you let the uh, you let gravity do its work. You wait for that to dry, and when you take it, you know, when you when it's dry and you turn it up, you know, the proper way, it'll end up um, like flowing outwards. So it'll end up looking. Um, let me just try and maneuver the camera. It'll end up like that. But with this particular one, we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it to hang loose to hang free. Now as you can see, where I put that second fold in before here, it's gone away because green stuff, um, the more yellow you have in it than blue, the more malleable it is. And what green stuff does as well, in the drying process, it does tend to stretch under its own weight. Let's just put that fold back in there like that. Okay. So as you can see, we have the uh, the start of the cape. Now I'm going to leave that to dry overnight. Where are we going to put this? You know, I'll just leave it smack bang in the middle of the desk. And uh, join me for the second part of the tutorial. But before I do that, don't be discouraged um, when you're making your cape. You, when you start doing it, it can look like arse. Really, it can look so, so shit. Um, you've just got to keep at it. Now... A lot of the capes that I've done are very trial and error. I think most capes that I've done, in fact, in all of them, in fact, are trial and error. Like this one here, on this model, this probably took me about four or five attempts to get it looking how I did. Uh, and like these capes are a lot harder as well to do because with a wolf pelt, you can just maul it with your fingers uh, and not worry about the fingerprints too much because you're going to be sculpting fur over them, as I said before. With this one, you have to smooth it down. Now, that involves some very fiddly business. You've got to kind of roll out the green stuff. I will probably do another tutorial on capes, maybe when I come to another one like this. Uh, but the gist of it is you've got to kind of use something to, to roll it out with. Uh, so it's like that, and then you've got to cut it very carefully and not touch it at all. Um, let's take him off the base, because as you can see, the only marks in there are marks that I've made, you know, within, you know, by accident with impressions and stuff. Um, so what you want to do, you want to use your, uh, you want to get one of the um, rubber tipped um, clay shaping tools, which I appear to have misplaced at this moment. I know, here it is. You want to get one of those, and the bigger one, this is fine for doing small things, but you want to get bigger ones, because what this enables you to do is smooth out the green stuff, as I said on a video previously, um, and you can, like, you can wet it. I personally just lick my sculpting tools, um, because I find that it's easier than having water. Plus, if you use a bit of spit as well, it stays slick for longer rather than water. Water has, it sounds really weird, but water has a fair degree of, like, you'll be doing it, it'll be like, it'll be too liquid, if you know what I mean. You want something that's slightly gooier. You can use stuff like Vaseline. Um, the only thing is with Vaseline is it's very awkward to clean off and you've got to then take like a small scrubbing brush and some very hot water and do it and it just ends up messy. It's too much of a messy business. So if you're going to be doing capes, invest in one of these um, because it will help you an awful lot. Um, like I say, your cape can look really, really crap. You've just got to keep going at it and keep trial and erroring it. Like when I first attempted a cape, um, it was awful. It was really, really bad and I was like, that just looks shit. So I peeled it all off again and started in fresh and literally four or five attempts later got the way it looked and like I say you'll never be able to make the same cape twice if you use the way that I use it because the way that I do it because it's all natural it's all to do with gravity and the way stuff naturally folds like I wouldn't have been able to sc properly sculpt the fold in that because of the way you know because you just can't do it the way it lands um yeah it's not if I'm gonna be able to do anything more to this maybe Put that down a little bit. So there. Now we're going to leave that to dry overnight, and uh, going to come back tomorrow and uh, hopefully finish it off for you. And now we're back. Well, as you can see, guys, the um, green stuff itself has uh, dried rock solid. This is actually on a cape. 
some of the solidest green stuff that I've actually had. Because again, if I bring this other guy into it, it's got a fair degree of flex, the green stuff on him, and that's... I don't know, I must have got the composition just right on it. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to make the cape look a bit more tattered, you know, and, and a bit more, more worn. So what we're going to do, we're literally just going to take our clippers, and we're just going to start clipping away at the, uh, the edges of the cape and stuff like that. Now, the best way to do it really is to just go with how you feel. So you just want to just shred the sides. And again, it doesn't have to be too, you know, perfect. You can just keep doing it how you feel. And leave little bits, like, sticking out and hanging off and stuff like that. What I normally do, I normally shred the edges more down here. Because, obviously, at the bottom of the cape, my door's just blown open. Hold on a second. There we go. Won't be bothering us anymore. Now we're the viewers. Um, so, yeah, just, we're just going to... Eh, just, like, tug little bits off. Hit, hit, tug little bits off. You get it? Okay. Actually, we just want to make it look as raggedy as we can. There we go. As you can see, it's starting to look fairly dilapidated. Like sometimes you might just want to not even cut stuff, just literally just pull, you know, just like chop at the edges. Like that, and just literally just fray them apart. So there we go. Oh, maybe switch hands. Maybe add some more like bits taken out of it up here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's got in a fight with the jeans dealer or something, or maybe you know he's got in a fight with like a corn berserker. And obviously, the corn berserker didn't leave the fight very well. But our Space Wolf Lord did. So yeah, I'm just gonna... Now this bit here, coming up, we're gonna give a little bit more of a, a raggediness like around here. Just hack little bits into it. There we go. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to sculpt the uh, the actual fur. So I'll give you a bit of a fur sculpting tutorial as well now ladies and gents, join me in a second. <laughs> 